Be not afraid of greatness. Some men are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. In 1987, Rick Astley had greatness thrust upon him. I always remember thinking to myself, my God, people are going to die when they see Rick Astley. Okay, if you take a combination of mutant and willows, also stock ache and a waterman, and a guy called Rick Astley in a song called Never Gonna Give You Up, and you have a hit. Have a look at this. First time on Top of the Pops, it's superb. I think I remember hearing a record and thinking, that's a great new soul singer. Certainly everybody thought he was black. It was very difficult to suspend your disbelief when you actually saw him in the flesh on Top of the Pops, because you thought, this boy looks like an accountant. suspected at first that Rick Astley wasn't for real, you know, that it was actually some old soul geezer from America, and they just kind of picked this office boy to come in front of him. He sang from right there at the back of his throat, didn't he? I'm never going to give you up. Not only did his voice attract me, but his movement, this little funny dance he did, and it reminded me of when I saw Van Morrison in about 65. It was the same shock to the system as like this amazing voice and this silly little dance. He didn't have dancing lessons. He didn't even know he was doing that sort of little dance that he used to do that everybody thought wanted to copy. It's probably unfair, but I remember him being the most appalling dancer I'd ever seen on, on a television screen. Don't tell me Along came Rick, and suddenly it was okay to stand there with your feet firmly planted as if super glued to the spot, and just occasionally, you know, try and do something with your upper body. Rick appealed to the biggest audience on the face of the earth, the middle of the road. Ladies and gentlemen, 1987 was an incredible year for our next artist. He's the top-selling singles artist of the year, and this is the best-selling record of the year. I mean, he sold 15 and a half million. People forget how big Rick Astley was. Here is Rick Astley! He was the closest we've ever come to Frank Sinatra. Whenever I need somebody, I'll bring my love to you. He never got measured for them. They were just kind of, you know, off the peg. I'd pop in the top shop on my way to Top of the Pops and pick up this suit. I think when we did Top of the Pops, I gave him 300 quid. He went down to the next in Warrington and bought his suit. Rick Astley has progressed from club singer to become the hottest property in pop. He's had three successive number ones in Europe and a chart-topping album. I am slightly uh, trying to progress myself a little more because obviously that's something that I want to do. Uh, I do like the idea of perhaps writing a, an album completely myself at some point and maybe even producing it all as well. But uh, I think you've got to take things a step at a time, you know. It was in the press that uh, Rick didn't want to be a stock aching waterman puppet. And I'm sure it's no secret anymore, there were certain tracks that he, that was released that he personally would rather he hadn't done. When I fall in love, it will be forever. It just so happened that Christmas came along and record companies being what they are and everything and uh, so they decided to release it as a single. That was not the intention, believe me, but there you go. He wanted to do other things, which he talked to Pete about at the time, about moving it slightly from what they were doing then to something else. And of course, when that didn't happen, that then brought us to a bit of a, an impasse and something had to go. Cry for help, please release me from a record deal. Well, uh... Rick has got a new song that's really good, they different. I wandered around the streets of this town, trying... The minute 
that I was told he didn't want to record with me anymore. But I said to my lawyers, go and do the deal, give me his contract back. It didn't worry me, because I always said to Vic, I'd rather be his friend than his record company. He did have a deep feeling about him, and when it all went sour, if you like, it did upset him. And I think even now, if I sit and talk to Pete about it, I can see it upsets him. I consider myself to be a quiet person, so being in the public eye, the spotlight, or whatever you want to call it, uh, isn't typically me. I think you tend to value the simple things in life. Uh, suddenly, uh, Sunday lunch, you know, Sunday dinner in front of the TV, you know, all that suddenly becomes really important, you know. People used to say to me, oh, I bet you're really happy Rick Astley's fail. I went, no. Why? Why would I want Rick Astley to fail? I would have loved Rick Astley to go on from me, which he did. He did Cry for Help, which was fantastic. I would have loved him to go on and become what I thought he could be. Rick eventually decided that he needed a break from the music business. Some people just aren't cut out for fame and stardom, and I don't think he persisted with it because I don't think he wanted it. And I'm glad he didn't do it in the end, you know, because obviously he'd, he'd had enough of that at that point. A lot of blokes that night who went home and tearfully folded up the chinos, put away the blazers, and knew that there was a new era coming.